Again, highly, highly requested video. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. We're talking about onboarding today. How do you actually onboard a client? How do you make the process smooth, automated, and just overall a great client experience? So you might be wondering what actually is onboarding. So onboarding is the process of integrating a new stakeholder into your organization. Now, if you're wondering what that means, basically you just onboarding is like, how do you bring on a new customer and how do you actually start working for them? Now, remember, this is the first stage to your client's experience of you and your agency. So arguably one of the most crucial um, stages, just because this sets the whole tone for the rest of the relationship. So the idea of creating an onboarding process is basically you want to create like a funnel that you walk your client through and um, you want to ensure that this process is smooth, streamlined and ultimately, like most importantly, automated. Because any additional layer of communication you add on top of this increases the complexity and also in reduces your client experience. So how do you actually build this um, onboarding funnel? This is actually taught in Agency Incubator, so which is why I really recommend the course, by the way. Um, this onboarding funnel, I, when I saw it, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. But um, overall, the concept of it, I've built mine on Wix. Um, so I'm not really going to show you because then I know people will go through and what, uh, view my contracts and stuff. But um, anyways, yeah, so onboarding, I'm not going to show you guys that. but. Just take my word for it. So what you want to do in terms of the funnel, I'm just going to quickly explain it in terms of like just from step one to step seven. It's a seven step funnel. Well, step seven is kind of optional, but um, I have it there anyways. So step one of the funnel is going to be a welcome video, basically just welcoming the new client onto your agency and then just uh, introducing the onboarding process real quick. Uh, just tell them that, you know, it's a six, seven step process. Um, and should take you no more than let's say two hours to complete. Um, just make sure you're really, really thorough with this because you know the, the better and more detail you can complete this in, you know the more data that is going to give us, and also just really just um, improve your experience overall. Make sure you frame this as you know them doing themselves a favor almost. Um, you know, just because you want to frame everything as a benefit to the client. And to be honest, it is because, you know, um, it does save a lot of like back and forth communication and at, at ultimately like delays the um, actual service delivery side of things in terms of how soon the ad can be up if they don't follow this process. So yeah, then you would take them to the next stage, which is going to be like an expectations video and like going over, you know, what to expect over the course of the service. And then just kind of um, go through some of the emotional journey aspect of it. Because, you know, to be honest, like a lot of people come in and they might think, oh, this is like a um, get rich quick scheme where, you know, I throw 2000 into the ad budget and straight away it's going to pop out with eight and it will show straight away on the Shopify revenue page. And it, to be honest, it just doesn't really work like that with any agency, uh, just because there's a whole testing framework that we have to follow and then, you know, um, seeing what work, what doesn't, and then eventually launch and then scale their campaigns. So yeah, this Second video is arguably the most important stage of the funnel because you need to be um, setting expectations for this program to be really low so that you can actually over deliver um, when the time comes. And also just make sure um, to talk about things like communication policies, um, you know, working hours, how to interact with the team, and then just going over some or more of the general rules you have within your agency, uh, perhaps even going into a little bit about the ad set naming convention kind of things, or, you know, overall, just make sure that they understand the service that they're getting and what they're exactly getting into. Also recap the scope of work that you quoted them on. And yeah, that's it. So then you would take them to step number three, which is literally going to be uh, get the contract signed and the invoice paid. And this is really, really simple. This video should take no more than I'd say two to three minutes. Um, you want to have the contract as a link just below the video. <clears throat> and then and then the invoice should have already been emailed to them. So just be like, oh, you know, um, if you haven't paid the invoice for whatever reason, uh, please pay it now before you proceed to the next step. And also the link for the contract is down below. Feel free to have a read and just sign that when you're ready to and then move on to the next step. So it's really, really important that this step is done because do not start work for a client unless they have already paid because um, it's going to end up, you know, like there's going to be a lot of chasing. And to be honest, it really does uh, detriment is 
it really is a detriment to the customer experience just because you know like once work has already started they're gonna discount um, your value essentially and then when you ask them for the money they're gonna be like wait hold on you know you've already done this much work for me why, why would I pay you now like why can't you just continue work for free and that that's what they're gonna be subconsciously thinking and you know overall it's just gonna take more time for them to reframe before they actually pay you and it's just a massive pain in the ass uh, which is why I take payment and ensure that the contract is always signed before I even send them the onboarding link so yeah this step three um, is only supposed to be here as like a last resort option uh, should they choose not to sign with you let's say like they have a bunch of like verbal agreements already they're like super on it um, you know they've agreed to pay they've agreed to be onboarded that's why you want to put this in step three just so that they can go over through step two as well before they reach the step anyways so yeah once the contract is paid invoices um, sorry contract is signed invoice is paid you officially have a client now the stage four is going to be a tutorial video of you um, recording your screen on your laptop, showing them exactly how to add you as a partner to their business manager. So you want to attach your um, business manager ID at the bottom uh, below the video and then just get them to and then just like click through button by button, mouse drag by mouse drag, exactly the process they need to do and like um, in order to add you as a page uh, partner. This allows you to, you know, change their pixel data, install pixels, uh, view and monitor, create and optimize ads, everything um, basically just take over their business manager. And the reason why you want them to add you as a partner, not just hand over the password and email, is because to be honest, that's way more professional and a lot safer as well. Uh, just because then you can give access, employee access within your own agency to all of your contractors and media buyers, things of that nature, and anyone that needs whatever access, you'll be able to have control of that and they'll come under your agency as well. So yeah, which is why on Monday's video I said, you know, you need to make sure you know how to like uh, interact and interface with the business manager because, you know, just on a simple video like this, you're going to need to know exactly where to click and what to do uh, in order for them to add you as a partner. So yeah, step number five, this is going to be um, an audience intake form. So basically this is designed to uh, just have the client fill out this massive form um, through all of the information that you need in order to do service delivery on there. So, you know, a Google Drive link to all of their media assets, a um, email list of all of their past customers with like LTV on the side as well, preferably. Uh, another thing you want is like all of their mailing list that's not a customer as well, and then just ask for like things like personas and you know what um, what kind of brand image they really want to get across uh, what are the do's and don'ts for their brand things of that nature and the color schemes and basically just for you to understand more on a branding scale like what is their brand actually about and what kind of audiences and what kind of pain points they're really trying to solve uh, and target with their products so this form is crucial in terms of helping you uh, do your research, but also, you know, when it comes to actually service delivery, because without creatives, you know, can't really do much, right? Then you'll just be writing one line copies uh, for, yeah, God knows. Anyways, step number six is going to be the page where they book in the, um, kickoff meeting with you. So what that means is once the form is signed, I mean, sorry, the form is filled out, the contract is signed and the invoice is paid. All that's left to do is literally get them to book in a kickoff call with you where you you know you both strategize and then just set more exp um, reiterate the expectations and then you can crack on with the work so this video is um, basically gonna be just like I'd say less than two minutes long uh, saying you know this is how you can get booked in and there's gonna be a um, your scheduler embedded into the website uh, right below the video so you would literally be on that screen and then you would record yourself scroll down click whatever to book in and then yes yeah, get a discovery call not discovery sorry kickoff meeting booked with you and then lastly step number seven which is the optional one is you just want to qu quickly thank them uh, just be like thank you for your time da 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 we really look look forward to working with you blah blah um, you know it's just a really polite way to kind of conclude and wrap up 
the whole onboarding process. Now you can do this in step six. At the end, you just add a quick thank you and be like, well, that's all done, you know, um, thank you so much for going through the onboarding, blah, blah. But to be honest, adding that extra fun uh, step really helps me out, in my opinion, in terms of just, just making it clear like how much we actually appreciate the client. So yeah, um, that's the onboarding funnel in a nutshell and how you actually should onboard the client. Um, oh, yes, um, so I got a comment yesterday, I believe, and it's asking, you know, how you should uh, introduce the media buyer and the contractors. So what you need to do is once they book in the kickoff meeting, um, just tell, uh, invite your media buyer or contractors or whatever to that meeting as well, and then just introduce them as the account manager and just be like, hey, um, this is a person that's going to be managing all of your accounts, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and then just be like, um, I'm going to oversee the strategy, which you should, by the way, um, because you know it is your agency and you are the one responsible ultimately, not your contractor, for what results you deliver. Um, so do work really, really closely with your contractor in terms of the communication aspect, but I like to put them in direct contact because that way it reduces the extra layer of communications because let's say, you know, my media buyer has to relay information to me and then um, me to the client. There's going to be some sort of uh, bleed through in terms of like leakages in the information pipeline, which is why I like to have them uh, be in contact with each other directly. Now, some people are scared that, you know, um, your media buyer might be stealing the client or whatever. And that's totally understandable. I mean, if you only have one person on your team and which happens to be a media buyer, like I would definitely see like where the fear stems from. However, this is where the vetting process for your team needs to be like on point to the T because and also your communic communication uh, policy really does apply here as well. Um, so basically you just need to be able to put 110% faith in your media buyer that you know this is a good person that I hired and this person will not only do the job but also won't steal the client and to be honest that just takes with uh, comes with trust and time. Uh, so yeah not much I can really say about that, but just, you know, bring, that's when they, um, the, your team meets the client and then from there communication becomes so, so, so much easier and more streamlined. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, if you did give this video a like, uh, follow me on my Instagram here. I do live Q and A's every single Monday. Also any feedback on earlier this week's, the vlog would be amazing. And I also started TikTok. Uh, so I'll link that down below as well. My TikTok name is same as my YouTube, just just Boy and Zhao. Um, I make some pretty like just average TikTok entrepreneurship content. Um, I know a lot of you guys follow me for my student stuff as well, which is why um, I started a TikTok because to be honest, on that it's more of just general like productivity hacks, life advice, uh, mindset advice, uh, as opposed to more of the specific like okay, this is how you actually run a business. This is how you run an agency. Uh, blah blah like ask these questions um, in an interview etc etc it's not really like that it's more for the general like 14 to 16 year old um, young hustler person going through like their GCSEs um, just a bit of entertainment for them and also hopefully add a bit of value to their lives as well so yeah TikTok's down below and I will see you guys next week's video bye guys